to enjoy that glass of wine uh, a little bit more. So tonight's webinar is all about how to make simple automation work for your business. So before we kind of get into that, uh, I just want to draw your attention to our support site or our, our customer success site. So this is our site where we put all of our resources, videos, blogs, everything like that. It's a great, great tool. Um, we're constantly updating it. And we're going to be adding in a lot more new things that you know aren't just documents, aren't just videos. Uh, we're looking at other animations, other again, uh, getting starter guides, help guides, everything like that to give you guys the best experience possible. So do check that out. And obviously the video for this webinar will be stored on there so you can watch it back again. I just want to draw your attention to our social media as well. So if you're not already liking us on Facebook, uh, I know a few of you are already and, and you've taken the opportunity to comment on a few things that Diddy and the team are, are putting out there. Um, by all means, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and also connect up with us on LinkedIn. So, that's me, Matthew Ruddle, Customer Success Director for the system, uh, for InTouch. So, hopefully we've all spoken. If we haven't, then I'm, I'm sure that you know, it's a missed opportunity by myself, and I'm sure we'll speak uh, very soon. But I'm going to be taking you through the webinar tonight, and we're going to take you through the automation side of things. But you know, if I'm, we're not following following each other on Twitter, by all means, let's link up there, or, or even let's link up on on LinkedIn as well. So, um, you know, uh, happy to chat with anybody and everyone. So let's kick off tonight's webinar. So tonight's webinar is all about automation and how to get it to work for your business. So what we're going to do, we're going to start off um, with the agenda. So we're going to have a look at the concepts behind it, we're going to look at some basics, and then we're actually going to just roll up our sleeves and actually start building one in the system, and actually showing you the various different steps that you can actually play with. So, and then we'll do a bit of a Q&A. Obviously, if you have any questions throughout, by all means, put them into the little chat window, and I'll try and answer them as we go. If not, I'll store them for the end for the Q&A section. And then we'll also look at the next webinar as well, which is going to be something a little bit different. Um, but uh, hopefully it'll be very interesting um, from your side and ours. So let's actually look at automation then. So we're going to look at some, some basics and we're going to look at the concepts of, of automation and why you should actually use it or why it's going to actually benefit your business. So automation, in a nutshell, is there to drive prospects through your funnel. So it's there to take some of that, that kind of responsibility and that extra workload you know, off your shoulders so that you can guide people through um, the roots of being a prospect right the way through to actually converting them and actually saving you time in the process. You know, it's about monetizing things in your business. I was talking to somebody earlier and we were actually going through uh, something that they were doing for their clients and actually saying, you know what, if they have a form on their website and, they're, and they get an email that those details, what do they actually do with them? If they don't get stored in a CRM system or even a spreadsheet or, or anything, what are they actually doing with them? And, and they basically said, well, they get the details, they then um, they get them in an email, they then load them into their system, so they're manually copying and pasting, and then they manually uh, copy an email and, and paste that into an Outlook email and send that off to them. And you're thinking, okay, so it's going to take them about five minutes, you know, as a, as a generous estimate, to load that contact onto their system. So by the time you've got six, con uh, 12 contacts, that's an hour. Well, how much do they charge per hour? If they're charging you know, their time at 40 pound an hour to a client, all of a sudden they're wasting an hour and it's costing them 40 pounds to just deal with some inquiries that you know, may or may not actually come through and become customers. So why not automate some of that sequence? That automation is there to help you drive business and actually save you time, which is valuable. You know, we all could do with a few more, few more hours in the day. But also then, you know, trying to monetize that and actually get people to convert. You know, it's about trying to align all your marketing messages because email isn't the be all and end all. Shock horror, I've said that. But you know what? Email marketing is one tool in your arsenal. You know, you've got text messaging, you've got letters, you know, they're still applicable. You've got surveys, you know, you've got so many different methods, social media, to actually contact people that 
Actually, by the time you've done an email campaign, by the time you've done an SMS campaign, by the time you've done a letter, by the time you've picked up the phone and called somebody, it all takes time. So, again, the more that we can automate, the more you can actually put a system in place you know, that can actually work for you. But it is about planning. And some of the basics of automation is about actually planning how you're actually going to do this. Because you don't set off and say, right, I'm going to drive from Western Supermare to Manchester. And you don't just go, I'm hopefully going to point the car in the right direction. You have a plan. You have a map. You turn the sat-nav on. You, you have that, that guide taking you from A to B, and hopefully in the quickest possible way. So one of the basics of automation, you have to plan it. Um, and there's a tool I'll show you that I use to, to plan things out. Um, that I'll share with you as well. But planning is key because you've got to know, first of all, your destination. And, and you've got to know how you're going to get. And there it is, you know, your destination. You need to know your goal. You know, what is your aim? Is your aim just to handle your inquiries better on your website? To save that five minutes per inquiry that you're having to enter their details and then copy and paste the same response that you send to everybody. I registered an inquiry yesterday with somebody and I got sent back an email. As you would, I emailed the inquiry. In. But you know what? That response was a copy and pasted response. I could tell that because it didn't answer any of my queries. But I knew that it was just copied and pasted. It wasn't using a system or anything like that. I'm thinking, this poor bloke is literally going through every inquiry, copying and pasting the same answer day in, day out. Not only is that monotonous, but how much time is that actually taking? So, you know, nice and simple. You've got to have your goals. And if your goal is to save you time, if your goal is to make you money, or if your goal is to, to you know, have a really, really complicated sequence that, that makes, you makes you money, saves you time, and does everything for you, then have that goal and build that plan around it. Once you have got that plan and you have got the goal, you've got to think, okay, well, at what stage am I going to send what message? And this is where it becomes about the actual message that you're going to send because of the fact that, you know, if your message doesn't align with your goal, well, how are you going to get people to it? You know, you've got to be, you know, educating people and you've got to be moving them along your pipeline and put, your, put yourself in the shoes of the customer. Again, you know, if you're going to be reading a message, well, is that on goal? Is that on target? I don't know. So, again, you've got to have the right content, the right message with the right words for the right target audience. See? Nice and seamless. So the next point about automation is it's not about you know, the old machine gun marketing methods of, of you know, a leaflet drop. I'm going to drop a leaflet to, to, to my town and I'm going to hopefully get some business for it. It's going to be you know, thousands of leaflets. It's not going to be applicable for everyone. The whole point of marketing automation or sales and marketing automation is to help you get laser focused. It's to help you hit that target with as little effort and fuss as possible to get your results. You know, if, if it saves you time, and it makes you money because you are, are so focused, because those hundred inquiries are being dealt with in such a way that it go, takes people from A to B, and it means that you just pick up the phone once and you get that sale because you've guided them through this sequence, you've warmed them up. That's brilliant. That, mean, that is a far more effective way um, to use your time than just trying to go, you know what, I've got 10,000 people on my database, and I'm just going to fire this email off and see what sticks. You have to get focused. And this is where your plan and your goals and your messages come into it. And it's also about process and discipline. You know, let's face it, if you've got a website form and that is sent to you in an email and at the moment you're going through and copying and pasting, copying and pasting, that's your process and you've got to be incredibly disciplined to do that. One of the things about automation, and I'll show you that in a second when we actually start to build it, is to actually help you stay on process and help you stay disciplined. There's nothing worse than setting something up and not following it through. We're all guilty of it at times. You know, there's no denying it. But the more that you can do that will help nudge you away from those edges of distraction, the better. 
And again, sales and marketing automation isn't just about blasting email after email after email after email to try and wear somebody down. It's about actually helping you work smarter and get in that process and get in that discipline. And then again, like everything, um, you know, if you've ever read the the, the book um, Seven, you know what? It's actually slipped my mind. Um, seven Habits of Highly Effective People, or something along those lines. I, I, it's really slipped my mind at the moment, which is really bad because I even saw it this morning. Then the final discipline is sharpen your saw. Is to actually keep training, keep learning, keep reviewing, keep evaluating. And you know what? It's exactly what you should be. There we go. Thank you, Sarah. Yes, yeah, seven habits of highly effective people. Obviously, I need to get one that helps me with my memory. Um, so, yeah, it's a fantastic book. And the final habit is to sharpen your saw. Because you need to review things. You need to go over things. Just because one thing works today doesn't mean it's going to work tomorrow. It's the same as you know, technology. Technology moves along constantly. If you bought an iPhone when they first came out, well, you know what? It's obsolete now. Um, if it's still working, it, it, it's great. But um, technology moves on, so therefore things are always getting better. There's always progression. So you should always take a, a, a step back, review and evaluate um, what you're actually doing and whether it's effective. We have sequences ourselves. And you know what? For one sequence in particular, I think we're on our fifth or sixth version of it, um, and that's within the last year. Because literally... Every month we review it and we find out what's working compared to the last month, the same volumes of people going through it. And again, we just need to step back, sharpen our saw because we read different blogs, we write different blogs ourselves, we learn different techniques. So therefore, we need to, to do that. So and we're the people building the system. So always don't always remember to review and evaluate. So what is actually in sales and marketing automation? Well, you've got things like adding to people to groups. You've got removing people from groups. So again, you're cleaning things up um, you know, after you go along. Of course, you've got sending emails. You've got creating tasks, creating a lead, sending a text message, and removing from a campaign. You've got lots of different functionality in there. And we're actually going to go and have a look. I am just going to draw your attention to this slide at the moment, something called Unreal Homes. When I load this, this presentation on um, to the support site, I will leave all these slides in because there are different scenarios in there. There are different scenarios about how, um, how you can use this, uh, the system for a fictional company that we've set up called Unreal Homes. Um, obviously, it's not a real company. It's Unreal. So that's just a, um, I'll show you the website in a second as well. So we've got forms set up and we've got automation set up behind the scenes as well. But we're just going to jump into the system now. So hopefully you can all, all see my screen. And this is the automation set up for Unreal Homes. And this is the website for Unreal Homes. So all nice and simple. We've set it up like a real website. Um, apart from we are using Latin text. Um, but we've got forms on there, like the request a quote form. Now lots of people use request a quote, you know, contact us, or, or you know, various other forms like that. But it's about then having a sequence in place that will actually deal with that process. So to give you an idea, we're going to start building a process from scratch. So to do that, you go into automation and you simply click create new automated campaign. But wait, I'm jumping in and I'm jumping ahead of what I've actually said here. What's my goal? So my goal for this is going to be to deal with new quotation. Or a new contact us, a uh, new sales inquiry. There we go, new sales inquiry. Well, what am I going to do first? Well, besides knowing what my goal is, I'm going to use a little tool called Gliffy. So do take a note of that. Um, it's something that I use, something I recommend. And I'm going to build a flowchart. So you know, just by doing the simple things of, of even just calling something to start, and we'll just do that, adding in the different steps, of the sequence, you know, you just build a very visual flow of information. And you can call these different things. So I could call this one um, step one um, group. So again, you don't have to you don't have to overcomplicate things. You just need to start thinking and going, okay, well what's the process here? Step two. 
send thank you email really really simple but again you can start to see it's a very very visual tool and again you can put the little links in so you know the flow of information and again this is where you can get very complicated on things because you could say well actually on the thank you email I'm gonna have five links now actually if they click on one link I want to send them off to another campaign and I can then say well actually this is link one and since we're doing it for Unreal Homes we could call this one bathrooms and we can send them off into the bathroom campaign which we can then also plan out here and we can add you know, other things hanging off this so as you can see even just from discussing it here this is very very complicated and can really get away from you quite quickly and that's why planning it out in something like Cliffy with your goal in mind can be very very effective so I'm gonna now jump back into the system so I've somewhat planned it I've used Gliffy and I've got my my basic flow chart and I know what I want to do so let's actually start so we're gonna go new sales um, form completed so we're gonna call it something that's very applicable to what we're actually doing so this is so if I look down my list of, of automated campaigns I'm gonna be able to see this one and go okay well this is the new sales form complete if I actually put the uh, D on the end so I know what it's going to be and where it's going to come from so what I'm going to do then is say whether I want it to be a linear or a date based campaign but what's the difference well a linear campaign means that if I put somebody in it today they will get email 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 however many steps that I put in there if it's a date based campaign then I'm actually putting a target date so for instance if I select date I get the option to say well pick a date and that could be the 25th of December so Christmas Day could be my, my middle date I can then hang things off it and say well actually one day before that date send them this campaign or send them this email five days before put them into this group ten days before um, send them this email and basically that goes for afterwards as well so I could say well actually after Christmas Day one by one day send them a little Boxing Day email five days after maybe send them the email that says you know, Happy New Year that kind of thing so no matter when I add somebody to the sequence if I created a Christmas email right now a, a Christmas date based campaign I could add all of my customers in today and that email will not fire off until it, it hits six days before Christmas because that's probably the first step that I, I would actually put in so you can see how the date based one can actually be used because it could be used for for events or anything like that because you're literally picking a key date you also can pick a date field so the date field would actually allow you to pick uh, the date of birth field in the system it could be used to to pick another custom uh, custom field that you've set up for renewal date car garages when was the last time somebody had an MOT okay record that in the system and build a campaign around it really really nice and simple yeah. subscription services anything like that if you've got membership services well when's the membership to you add it in there and away we go then we can start to build and say right three months before two months before one month before ten days before and we just build a campaign around those goals and requirements but this one this one's going to be a sales form completed and we'll have a look at the form in a section uh, in a second so we'll actually show how we link it all up but I'm going to create this campaign and so all we do is we click the big red button that's create campaign and straight away the system goes okay well what do you want to do what's your first step so thinking back to my, my quick little glyphy diagram my first step was going to be to add to a group so the reason why I'm going to add to a group is because when somebody how people are going to get into the sequence is going to be from um, from a website form so it's quite important that we still remember how people are going to be transitioned into this campaign so because they're coming in from website form I'm going to call this group and I'm going to create a new one rather than add them to an existing and I'm going to call this one um, 
new uh, sales form leads, for instance. And I could call this one June 2015 because, again, going back to the, my last point on, on um, things to do with automation and sharpening your saw, Again, go back and review. So therefore, you can have people going into a June group, a July group, and, and so forth. It's entirely up to you, but always call things something that is applicable, something that in a month's time, two months' time, you will look back and you will know exactly what it is. The amount of times that we see people, we call it group one or group two or test or test one, call it something applicable. So big bit of uh, a golden nugget there. So, okay. What I'm doing here is I've set the time delay to be immediate. So as soon as people fill out that form and they come straight into my system, so I'm already saving that time on that data entry, they're going to be put into this automated campaign. And the first step is going to fire off immediately. As soon as they hit my database, bang, they're going to go into this group. And they're going to go into to the action, which is the group, and this is the group name. And I simply save. And now I've added a step in my campaign, and you'll see it's saying it's not started. And I don't want it to be started at this point because I'm still building. I'm still putting down the foundations at the moment. I'll start it when I think I'm finished. What I then want to do, and again, thinking about things logically, if, people, if these people have come from a website form, if you complete a website form, what do you expect? You expect some form of acknowledgement to say that your inquiry is being dealt with. How many times have you completed forms in the past where you don't get anything and you, and you end up twiddling your thumbs and thinking, did they get my inquiry? Don't know. Okay, I'm going to register another one and another one and another one. Or you may just go, actually, you know what, I'm going to go to their competitors. So you want to acknowledge something. And again, Thinking about it, I could trigger this off immediately. I could actually say, you know what? Leave it 15 minutes. Or maybe actually just leave it five minutes from when they, they've completed it for them to get this email. And again, the action is going to be email. I can create a new campaign, or I could actually select one that's already been sent. But in this case, I am going to create a new campaign. Because I'm going to run through a couple of little bits and pieces with you as well. So when you are creating a new campaign, you give it a campaign name. So this is going to be um, thank you email for sales form. We give it a title, and this is where some people actually fall down. Because if we're collecting information from a form, you should ask their first name and last name. You're getting a bit of information about people. So you know what? You can actually customize that. Their, um, the subject line. So you could actually say, percentage, first name, percentage, thank you for your inquiry. Well, one of the first things there is you're personalizing it, and that personalization normally finds that you get an extra between 1% and 5% open rate, which seems a bit of a, a long shot. But you know what? It has an impact. The needle on those, ch those charts move just by you having that personalization and subject line. You can then select the send from email address. And you simply move through the sequence then. So we pick a template. And again, we'll just pick something um, nice and simple. So we'll pick that one. Template 3 impact. And you can do whatever you want with the actual email campaign. So you can add images. You can you know, customize the text. You could have, I could have picked a plain one that just simply fires off a little thank you. But obviously, if you are communicating with people, do put links in there because you can track them. Because the next step in this sequence of creating an email is to say, well, actually, do you want to add another level of automation? And this will pick up the links that you've actually put in there. So if you have put a link back to your website, if you put a link to another product, so you know, whilst this one could be targeted on bathrooms, for instance, um, there could be something in that campaign that says, do you know we also do kitchens? So if somebody clicks on kitchens, I could then send them off into that other campaign, as I showed in that Cliffy chart. But I haven't put any links, so I'm just going to go finish. It'll show me a summary. I can go in and I can edit it. All I'm going to do is I'm going to return, and that, there we go. That's my second step in my sequence. 
So again, taking a step back and thinking about this campaign, the first thing is the um, the person has completed the form, it's come into the system. Fantastic. The first thing that's happened then is they've gone into a group because they've gone into this automated campaign. Then, after five minutes, they've got an email that says thank you. Fine. But what else can we do? Well, we're going to add in another step. And again, this is all about helping us get more organized about uh, what we do. So what we can actually do now is we can say, you know what, immediately, again, I'm going to create a lead because that's a potential bit of business. So I'm going to call it um, something relevant. I'm going to call it new lead in uh, from sales form. Again, you could actually call it a sale, but that's, a, that's very optimistic of me. Um, you can say who it's going to be managed by, so you can pick any user of the system, and then you can actually put a value to it. So you know what? If you know a general inquiry for you could result in a minimum order of £25, £300, £10,000, you know what? Put a guesstimate in there because you're going to follow up on this. So I'm going to just go, you know what? It's a... It's a bathroom inquiry, so that could be, um, you know what, I actually have no idea, so I'm just going to put £500 as a minimum in there. You can say where it's come from, so we can say you know, it's come from a web form. Expected closure date, again, this goes on your sales process, so this is where you could actually say we normally close things around uh, 25 days, so you can set that. Then you can say where, where in your pipeline for your sales process is it going to go. So we can say target list. So that's at, at the very um, starting level. And all we do is click save. So now when that form is completed, the person goes into the system, two actions get triggered. They go into a group, so we're segmenting our database. So therefore, when you come to do actual proper marketing campaigns, you can actually target those groups in particular. You then have a lead being created. So we're tracking that potential business. So we don't need to faff around with creating the lead. We just need to get on and actually start converting it. They get a thank you email. So an acknowledgement. And those are three actions that get kicked off from somebody completing a form. And I'll link a form up to this in a second and show you how that's done. But then what we can actually do is we can say, okay, well, you know what? I want to do more than just send that person an email. I want to actually talk to that person because that's part of my sales process. So again, going back to my Gliffy chart, I could create a task. And I just simply select it from the drop-down and go task title. And that is follow up on new sales um, lead. There you go. And I can set it up to, to be Rob from Unhill Homes. I can give it a category. So I can even say that where this has come from or where this task sits, so this task is going to be a call. And how many days have I got to actually complete that task? Well, you know what, I'm going to give myself one day to complete it. You could be a little bit more generous, but if a new inquiry has come in for this, uh, for this demo, it's going to be one day. So I'm striking while the iron's hot. And I save. There's no, there's no special ways of doing things. Again, it's just looking at your processes and just going, okay, well, how does this actually work? How am I going to systemize this approach? If you sit there and you write down your processes on a piece of paper, taking it from a new inquiry from your website or a new inquiry that walks in on your shop, a new inquiry that emails you, a business card that you pick up at a networking event, how are you going to deal with those people? So, and it's just about writing those steps down and then thinking, okay, well, how many of these can I actually just throw at an automated campaign? And so, you know what, when I get that business card, and I actually put this to the test a few weeks ago, I went to an, a business event uh, in Bristol and I collected business cards and I, I got the business cards and I was going to say, I, I cheated a little bit. I actually found an app on, my, an app on the phone called World Card that I could then take a photo of the business card, snap them all away, 
gave me a CSV file that I loaded into the system, and then I created a, a short, sharp little automated sequence with the first email that said, hey, it was great to meet you yesterday. And that's my follow-up process done because there was another task in there and there was a few other emails that got fired off as well. But that whole follow-up process then was automated for me. So let's have a quick look at what else we can do here. Because you could end up with a short, sharp sequence of four items, one of which is a customer touch point via the system, which is the email. Another one is the task, which actually will send you a notification to say it has been run. And then you've got your lead being created and stored. So you're tracking that business and a group being put in as well. So you're so many database. All from you taking a little bit of time to set things up. But actually from, from the, the person that wants to hear from you or the person that wants to buy from you, doing something. It's brilliant. Even if I do say so myself, I mean, the fact is that that can save you, um, you know, 20, 30 minutes per inquiry and actually keep you on task as well. So giving you a nudge in the right direction. The other things that you can do here is that if you are bringing people across from another campaign, for instance, you can actually remove them from a group. So if you have a customer sequence, so when somebody becomes a customer and obviously you want to, to keep in contact with them, you want to say, hey, thanks for signing up, um, that kind of thing, you can then remove them from a group and that group could be a prospect group. That could be your, your leads from a, a web form group, anything. You could also remove people from another automated campaign. So again, when somebody becomes a customer and starts paying you, you could take them out of your prospecting campaign and put them into this new one, which is your, your nurturing, your new customer one. You have those, those, um, those options, really, and you can actually send a text message. Because let's face it, how many of us here at the moment are sat with our mobile phone right next to us so that if we got a text message, we move, our eyes would move away from the screen and we'd have a quick look at the phone to see you know, who's texting you or, or whatever. You know, I'll hold my hands up. My phone has lit up already and I have had a quick glance across to it. So you know, we all do it. So why not actually use text messaging in your campaign? It's something a little bit different. It's another customer touch point that can be automated. And again, people often ask us, well, how far into the future can I build a sequence? You know what? If you want to build a sequence that's going to run for years, by all means, go for it. Um, you may have to tweak the content every so often, um, unless the content is going to be really last uh, and stand the test of time. But I've got people that have campaigns that run for a year, at least. When, when people sign up and become a member of, say, their service, they drip feed the marketing all year round leading up to their renewal. So they don't just leave it and go, well, you're a customer of mine now and I'll, I'll kick off a campaign in, in 10 months' time when it's getting close to your renewal. Actually, no. Their campaigns are, are, are 20, 30 emails strong because they're, they're firing something off every week or every other week or something like that right the way up to where they should be having a, their renewal. And that includes some tasks. So therefore, when they are getting close to their renewal, they get an alert to say, you know, Fred Bloggs is getting close to his real here. Pick up the phone, give him a call. So you've got all those options. And what you can actually then do, I'm not going to kick off that action. Is I'm going to go into this campaign. So what I could do is now I'm happy with my campaign. I have my campaign, uh, my email ready to send. I've got all the other steps. I can start it. I just click start. And I can either drop people into it via the manage contact section, or I can put a group into it, a report into it, pick individuals. I can even go into a contact record, and there's a tab called automation. I can then select from a drop down and just chuck people into it. But this campaign, we've set out with a purpose. We've set out that we're going to hook it up to a web form. So if that web form is that, that quote request, so be it. We can look at that. So what we can actually do is we've got the, this form here, it's a new uh, quotation request. We can simply go and edit the form. And all we actually do is, this is where I test my memory, there we go. So we literally click on the available campaigns to find new sales form completed. 
and we move it over to the selected campaigns and all we do is click save and continue and that's it that form is now hooked up to that campaign so when people fill out these details they'll go into that campaign so they'll go into a group they'll go into uh, a new lead will be created they'll get an email and a task will be created for me to pick up the phone and speak to them brilliant simple so you just pop that form on your website whilst I'm here I will draw your attention to another thing so we've got product type here this is a custom field that we've set up now this is a custom field that's actually on this form which has, gives us these um, these tick boxes these different options now what this allows us to do is on the actual form when we've selected this we get a little extra icon and we can click on that icon and it basically says okay let's add some automation to another level of the form so if somebody selects contemporary bathrooms well we put them into a bathroom campaign you know that's contemporary bathrooms if somebody um, selects contemporary kitchens we've put them into a contemporary kitchen automated campaign so you can even break people down in terms of automation based upon options that they've selected within a form so that means that you can have a general campaign that's going to fire off to deal with that new inquiry but if you have got a custom field that's a, a drop down option that's a mul multiple choice option something like that where you define the options in it you can break it down even further does that mean you, you should bombard them with more emails no not at all but that's that campaign that could that's for contemporary bathrooms could just actually have one step in it and that step is to add them to a group called contemporary bathroom inquiries so straight away from somebody filling out a, a website form they'll go into my main campaign to deal with that inquiry and we'll siphon that off but actually if they tick the box to say they're interested in contemporary bathrooms and kitchens they actually go into two other campaigns which then add them to two groups which means that in that first inquiry apart from setting everything up I haven't had to do anything and that person's in three groups so I know what they're interested in I know that their inquiry is being dealt with and I'm being given a kick up the backside to make sure I give them a call because I've got that task brilliant really nice and simple and that's it so there's no kind of hidden secrets or hidden complexity or, or some magic buttons that you've got to press it's just really working out about how you you deal with things at the moment what your processes are mapping them out and then just going and creating that campaign from there and remember you're not alone in this you can always pick up the phone and speak to us and actually or raise a support ticket or, or you know reach us in any method where you can actually say guys can you just take a look at this this is this is my plan does it make sense have I translated what I've scribbled down on a piece of paper into the system to automation and we'll happily take a look at it so as I said there are some slides here as well based around Unreal Homes where it shows you the process for things like the quotation request and, and various things like that as well but what I'm going to do I'm going to throw the floor open for questions now so are there any questions that you have on automation what we'll do is we'll switch everything into what we call QA mode so that you have the ability to to raise a virtual hand and I can unmute you and you can ask your question in front of everyone so don't be shy um, I'm sure nobody bites or you can just uh, type it in the chat window everybody can see and I'll hopefully answer it that way or if you are shy and, and, and not sure how to phrase your question by all means pick up the phone to me um, we can have a chat or you can email me um, and we can you know answer your question on a one-to-one -one basis if need be as well so any questions at the moment have I bamboozled you Ooh, we have a question so Paul I'm just giving you uh, giving you a voice so you should see something on your screen to, to say yeah let's link up Let's just give it a second and uh, hopefully you should hear, hear Paul. Oh, 
or not. I'm not sure what happened there, Paul. Um, I don't know whether you've got the, the webinar as well. Um, let's see, we'll just give Paul a couple of a couple of seconds to come back. Yep. Not sure what happened there, Paul. I've just seen you come back. Um, don't know whether you want to type your question in or or, or try again. Just type in a question. Any other questions that anybody wants to ask? Um, just while, while Paul's typing this. Seems like everybody's typing frantically at the moment. Do we have any simple processes that we can share? To help you set this up, um, we do have a few, but not everything. Um, not everything that we actually do relates to to everyone. So I mean, it's quite easy for us to say, well, when you have a form, do X, Y, Z. Um, not not all uh, the automation plans actually relate to everyone. What we've actually started to do with people is more um, more assisted kind of setup type things where I'm actually working with a few clients at the moment where we've actually had an initial call where we've taken down their notes and we've summarized what they want to achieve with automation and we've built them the flow charts and the next step is to have another call where we will actually go through everything, explain everything and then we will actually work together to build it to make sure that, that what they want to achieve can be achieved. Uh, so Paul's question then, uh, is it possible to see an overview in InTouch to match the Gliffy flowchart? At the moment, no, um, but it is something that we are looking at. So um, we've actually taken on several other developers in the last couple of weeks where now that we've got them you know, completely bedded in, we'll be getting a lot more automation stuff out the door as well, uh, including something called fixed date automation, but I'm not going to mention that too much. But we are looking at visual representations within the system as well. Because again, that helps you see what's going on and seeing what the next steps are. Uh, right, so Sarah's question. So with automation, if someone unsubscribes, do they get an option to choose which group they opt out of to prevent them from losing them completely? At the moment, no, because it is just one list. So if somebody unsubscribes or complains, then they are unsubscribed or, uh, or taken off your list for everything. It is something that we are looking at because, again, it'll add another dimension to the system. But, again, there are things in the system called update forms that you could actually work the unsubscribe quite cleverly by asking people to complete an update form and actually tell you what they want to opt out of. So if you know that you've got a few groups or something like that, you could add in um, add in uh, a custom field to say, well, well what, which of my... My communications do you want to get? You could even ask them how often do you want to be communicated with? We've got that running with a number of customers at the moment where whilst they're delivering their emails daily because they're voucher websites, actually they've had people come back and say, you know what, just send me a weekly summary um, or send me something every two weeks or send me something every month. If I miss out, I miss out. So there are a few things that you can do with update forms that could, could mitigate that. So Paul's question, so how would you recommend testing an automation uh, that has been set up? Um, you know what, put yourself into it. That, that, that's, it may sound so, like really simple, but actually by putting yourself into it, you can see what's going on. There's actually a, a button within automation as well that you can actually see upcoming events. So these upcoming events are obviously the different steps of the automated campaign that are all going to fire off. So by putting yourself in there, uh, you, know, you, you ride the waves and, and you see see what's going to happen. You know, again, when I was testing our, our phone system in the office, whilst it's not automation, um, I, I phoned it, I timed it, um, I tweaked it based upon thinking. Actually, you know what? Having a sixty second delay before all the all the phones ring um, on certain steps is not right. Actually. 60 seconds seems to be a long time, but in my head, it didn't seem that long. Um, so therefore, I tweaked it and changed it and, and 
you know, I've added myself into to lots of automated campaigns to see what's going to happen, um, and then change the timings based upon thinking. Well, okay, if I filled out a form and I'm I'm getting something in in within two hours, actually maybe I should be getting something straight away. Uh, again, some of this is going to be an error, but never be be afraid to ask us questions. Whilst you know, I'd love to say that we are the the definitive experts on automation. You know, we know about email marketing. We know about our system. We know about you know, the marketing aspects. We've also worked with with hundreds of businesses over the years, helping them build better processes within the system as well. So, you know, hopefully we can bring something to the table to help you out as well. So, give us a call. You know, we can jump on a screen share and we can walk through things as well. You know, we're here to help people at the end of the day. Any final questions? Hopefully I've answered them um, without bamboozling too much. Any final questions? Going once, going twice, sold. Okay, so, because I don't want to don't keep you guys too too long, um, because I'm aware that it's, it's, it's almost 8 o'clock. Um, so, the next webinar is going to be on the 8th of, of July. And it's going to be a Q&A with James White, so our, our, our CEO, our, our, our man at the top. So we're going to be looking at over the last 10 years of InTouch, so you know whether we should share some of the original screens. Um, but it's going to be a Q&A, and it's going to be something a little bit different because you know we're not going to be talking about InTouch for a day. We're going to be, you know, James has, has, he may not like me saying this, but he's been there, done that, got the T-shirt a few times. Um, in terms of what he's done in his life, I mean, he, he's a former European marketing director of some very, very, very large companies. Um, he sits on the board of, of a few um, health trusts and everything as well. So, you know, he's got a lot to, to bring to the table. So we're going to open it up to customers. Again, if you can't make the session, do email questions over. We will get some emails out about this as well. And we'll pick some of the best questions, but also we'll be doing a live Q&A. So, so you can put the big man on, on the spot um, uh, and just, just pick his brains you know, and, and just find out a bit more information. Hopefully, people will, will want to ask him a few questions. We've already got uh, a number of people already booked on, so um, we will be closing it off um, probably before the event um, at this mo moment in time. So do book on. We will email out about it, though. But again... This video will be posted on our success site. Uh, if you do have any suggestions of what you'd like us to cover in the future, by all means, tell me, tweet me, drop me an email, anything really, and we can uh, get something kicked off and get something put together. Um, do follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, hopefully you found it useful, but thanks for giving it your time tonight, guys. Um, as I said, do talk to us if you have any questions or anything. We're here to help. Um, but thanks for giving up your time tonight to join us tonight on this webinar. And, um, yeah, hopefully we can bring you bring you some more, more useful ones in the future. So have a good evening. We will post this video out as well. And, um, yeah, we look forward to speaking to you in the future. Have a good evening, guys. Thanks. Good night.